What's happening, M0A Nation? Jason Shepard here, continuing with this theme of Mock Checkride May. I hope you're checking out all the amazing resources we have, not just these videos, but our podcasts as well, in-flight coffees, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time on the M0A Facebook, and I hope you've already grabbed our audiobooks on Audible. Speaking of that, I'm reading from past your instrument pilot checkride today. It's kind of like, it's like story time with Jason today. So we're going to be diving into that. Last week, although the video was titled, you know, kind of on the theme of how to prepare for your private pilot check ride, if you have an instrument pilot check ride coming up, could you go back and watch that video as well? Because it will only serve you that much greater because the advice really transcends what check ride you're preparing for. And I want to pick up on a theme before we dive into some story time with Jason here. The theme of that last week's video was, Jason, I'm two weeks out from my check ride. what do I do? And we talked about check ride pitfalls, we talked about immersing yourself in the content, avoiding rope memorization, we covered all these things. But leading up to that, how often should I be flying? How often should I be studying? Well, let me answer it for you. We're two weeks out. Week one, I want you flying at least twice. In a perfect world, three times. Schedule three, knowing that one's gonna get canceled because of weather, maintenance. If you get all three in, that much better. It's awesome. This is also the week it would benefit you to go out and do a mock check ride with another instructor. I shared that in last week's video as well. This is a good week to do it. I like it two weeks out because Sometimes a mock check ride with another instructor can be a, a huge confidence booster. It could also be a confidence killer as well. If it's a confidence booster, that's awesome. Let's ride that confidence all the way in. However, it can also be a confidence killer in the sense that, whoa, they were really tough on me. I was really nervous. I flew like garbage. Thankfully, I have you know two weeks now to fly back with my normal instructor and just fine tune those last few little things or say, can we push my check ride back two more weeks? Give me a month to work on this because that mock check ride was terrible on my part, right? I, I, you don't know what you don't know, right? They asked me questions I had never heard of before, maybe. So it could be a confidence booster, a confidence killer. You don't want to do it like days out from your check ride. You want to have ample time uh, to make those decisions. Ride the confidence in or create the plan to build the confidence from there. So two, three flights studying every single day. When I say every day, I'm not talking like college days of cramming because cramming and rote memorization just doesn't work. I mean diving into the audiobook, diving into the books, diving into the online ground school and whatever that may be for you and just chipping away 30 minutes a night. That's kind of the, the mode I want you in. And not just diving on the subjects of, gosh, I really need to brush up on IFR regulations, but I'm strong on weather still go back and watch the weather stuff too. Because if you get discouraged trying to study regulations, this is so hard. Go give yourself a confidence boost by studying something you know quite well. It's psychology and it's learning science as well. And there's a lot to back that up uh, with some spaced repetition, everything else going through there. Now we're a week out, same kind of game plan here. Two, preferably three flights, studying every single day. Let's say the check ride's on a Saturday morning, on Friday. On Friday, I don't want you to think about airplanes. In fact, when an airplane flies over, I need you to go like this and don't even look at it. Don't listen to it, oh, that sounds like a 172. Don't even look at it, right? It's hard for us because we're, we're all uh, aviation geeks in one way or another. Don't even look at the airplane. I don't want you studying. I want you focusing on you, focusing on your family. I want no alcohol, no just no junk, no sugary foods, I want uh, just clean eating, plenty of hydration all day, great healthy dinner, to bed early, minimizing caffeine, these sort of things, take a melatonin if it's what you need to fall asleep, getting super, super just restful, great sleep, you're gonna be nervous already, so let's start working on that sleep schedule. If sleep is an issue for you, let's start building up some, some good nights of sleep leading up to that check ride. The day of the check ride now, again, awaking early, arriving early. I will stress this many, many times over. 30 minutes, 30 minutes early is on time for a check ride. If your check ride is at 9 a.m., I want you there at 8.30. And you're gonna say, Jason, that's crazy. I don't want you strolling in at nine. 
you are going to be stressed. I don't need you running behind. It'll be just our luck that traffic is bad, that the, you need to stop and get gas, whatever that is. 8.30. If they say 9, that means you're there at 8.30. And at 8.30, I want you to find the little room the school's putting you in. I want you to line up all your books. I want you to get your chair comfy. I want to get you a water, get your DPE a water, have your snacks laid out, and you need to bring snacks, and have all these things ready ahead of time. So you have 30 minutes. I'm set up. I'm here. Let's just breathe and chill out a little bit, right? That's what we really need to do. Being early, by the way, is just professional, and what we do is professional in everything that we do. Speaking of professional, I need you to dress professional as well. Now, whether that's a collared shirt, I realize a lot of this is seasonal for you, but this is a good rule of thumb. I am not a golfer, but I know how golfers dress. That's a pretty good rule of thumb. Dress like you're going golfing at a nice golf course, I guess. Maybe there's different standards. I don't know. Dress like you're going golfing. I know check rides in August in Florida are tough. But again, you can get a golf shirt and golf pants tucked in with a belt and, and some sort of shoes that you're comfortable with. I'll come back to shoes in a second here. I don't mean to be weird, but this is serious stuff. A check writer examiner will tell you, someone who just shows up in a, in a hoodie and, and sweatpants and looks a mess, it, they're kind of off to a bad start in a way. You need to dress for the position, right? Flying is a professional sport in a way, and you need to dress accordingly for it. Let's end on shoes here, then we'll go to story time with Jason, I promise. Shoes. This is going to sound really crazy. You might say, man, I want to wear my nice dress shoes. Have you ever flown with those dress shoes before? Because you may hit the rudder pedals and go, ooh, that feels weird. Oh, this, doesn't, this shoe doesn't have as much flex to it. I would once again. You, there's nice tennis shoes, whatever it is. The, this is. You're going to think I'm so crazy. But the shoes you're going to take your check ride in, if you haven't worn them before, you're gonna wear them on your check ride, start wearing them two, three, four weeks out to get used to flying with your check ride shoes. Maybe even your whole check ride outfit for all that matters. Maybe I'm just, you can call me crazy, whatever you want. I am all about over preparing for things, right? We work, we, we make the plan, we work the plan as much as we can, but we also know the plan changes. That's true of business, that's true of relationships, that's true of flying and check rides especially. Sometimes you have to know when to divert, right? Let's plan it out as much as we can. Can't wait to read your comments on that. Hey, story time with Jason. Let's dive into it. Weather is a big portion of this, obviously, for us. Um, reading from Pastor Instrument Pilot Check right again on Audible for you. What are the three stages of a thunderstorm? What are the three stages of a thunderstorm? You can pause this video if you need more time, but for the sake of brevity, I'm going to answer it out for you. The three stages of a thunderstorm are, first, the cumulus stage. The cumulus stage is depicted as what? The cumulus stage is the building stage. Everything is growing, a building stage. Everything is growing, a updrafts is what characterizes it. That's the building stage, the cumulus stage. Next is the mature stage. The mature stage is, is signaled at the start of rainfall. The moment rain begins to fall, that storm has entered into what's called the mature stage. And lastly, we have the dissipating stage. The dissipating stage is where the storm begins to rain itself out. Have you ever been out shopping or, or just driving and it's raining, 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 and all of a sudden it seems like the whole storm just breaks loose and then it's over just like that? The drops get so much bigger? It's because the, the updrafts and everything else have ceased. That rain is now too heavy, so the storm lets it all out at once because it's dying. It is dissipating. That's why everything breaks loose for just a second. The drops get so much bigger. That is the dissipating stage. And then from there, the storm is actually over. Your instrument pilot check rides can be made up of so many weather-related questions, regulatory questions, everything else. If you're struggling with this, again, I encourage you to grab a copy of Pastor Instrument Pilot Check Ride audiobook if you want to brush up on a few things. Also, you can take a two-week, no strings attached, no credit card required, free trial of our online ground school at m0atrial.com. That's our brand new instrument course inside our brand new learning management system injected with the science of learning in there as well. So just very, very exciting uh, to show and share all of that with you all. So do check that out, m0atrial.com. Please also don't forget we're heading to Zoom again this month, m0alive.com. I'm doing a live Zoom mock check ride. I'll be asking questions. I'll be unmuting you to hear your answers. 
And if you get it right and you're one of the ones that I unmute, you're going to win something great. So m0alive.com to go ahead and uh, opt in and sign up for that as well. Again, no spam, no credit cards required. We are just here to serve you all, not just to pass your check ride, but to be a safe real world pilot because that's what we're ultimately all about. So listen, M0 Nation, I'm sorry these videos are being a little bit longer, but there's just so much to share. And I hope you realize, you know, next week we're gonna talk about commercial pilot check rides. And you may say, I don't wanna be a commercial pilot. There's some wisdom in what we're sharing next week um, that I encourage you, even if you're at the private pilot level, to go back, watch every video in this check ride series, because things like how to dress, that, that information transcends all check rides. And we'll be sharing more wisdom like that next week as well, talking more specifically about your commercial pilot check ride, but some great uh, transcendent information there as well. Have a blessed, amazing, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you.